Okay, uh, in this video what I want to do is tackle the issue of um, photoelectron spectroscopy, otherwise known as PES. And yeah, I know this sounds like a term which is out of some science fiction movie. Uh, just wrapping your mind around the uh, acronym PES is enough to give anyone a headache. But here's the deal. If you're in an advanced uh, placement chemistry class this year, um, you're going to have to know this. And depending on... Uh, the general chemistry class at the university level that, that you're in, you know, depending on which professor is teaching it, you may well also have to be uh, aware of PES and um, and how to uh, understand um, w what it is and how to use it. So um, this is going to be a two-part series. Um, um, uh, both videos I plan to have will be under 15 minutes and so let's get started. In this first video I'm going to try to um, boil down the theory behind it and we'll look at a couple different scans and then in the second video um, we'll look at um, the electron configuration and the scans of a few of the period four elements because that's where things kind of get weird. Alright so the first thing that you've got to wrap your mind around is you need to understand the relationship between light and electrons so over here on the right side of the screen what I've done is basically uh, drawn a representation of the energy levels in an atom uh, here I'm showing uh, protons with a positive charge the number of protons here is going to obviously depend on which atom it is and then these n levels represent the energy levels um, in the electronic structure of, of any given atom and essentially seven energy levels covers the uh, the elements on the periodic table um, the way that the uh, energy levels are structured we start with energy level one this is the one that is closest to the protons and then we extend from there upwards to seven you'll notice that in the schematic that I've drawn here that there's a difference in <clears throat> the distance between the different energy levels they get more compressed the higher we get and I've just tried to draw this to represent as accurately I can the actual situation so <clears throat> energy level 7 is a lot closer to energy level 6 than energy level 1 is um, to energy level 2 so the distances between the energy levels get shorter as we move from 1 towards energy level 7. Now I want to talk about this issue of energy because it's you've got to be very careful when you listen to a chemist or when you're in, in the reading and the textbooks on this because they use the word energy interchangeably a lot between terms and it, you can end up confusing what's going on here very easily. So the first order of business is to understand that um, an electron located um, here in energy level one is at a lower potential energy than an electron located in any of the higher energy levels and the reason for this is because that electron is closer to the protons all right and the closer you get to the protons the greater the force of attraction and therefore the lower in potential energy. So what I've done here is I've drawn two arrows and I've labeled them clearly. So potential energy relative to the electrons increases the farther that we get away from the protons. So an electron in N1 we say is lower in energy than an electron that would be in N7. By the same token it's going to require more iron, iron, ionization energy to remove an electron that's sitting in, in a suborbital in N1 than it will to remove an electron that's sitting in N7 for this, the same reason that I got into regarding the potential energy. An electron in N1 is simply closer to the proton, so there's a greater force of attraction holding that electron on the protons and the energy that it's going to take to remove that electron would be higher than the energy uh, to remove an electron say that might be sitting in the 3s subshell of n equal 3. Now how does photoelectron spectroscopy work? Um, a long time ago scientists figured out the relationship between energy and light. 
all right and I'm showing that relationship here and the energy of a photon is equal to Planck's constant times the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the wavelength of that light now there's nothing here to get upset about the H times the C is for our purposes is a constant so we don't even, we don't I don't even need to get into what those values are because the bottom line is this product relative to our discussion is not changing at all so the only thing that we care about or the only thing that I care about is that you see the relationship between the fact that an ener the energy of a photon is equal to a constant divided by the wavelength of that particular light so the main point being that any kind of light is going to have a certain amount of energy now any given electron also has a certain amount of calculatable energy associated with it so guys like Einstein were able to figure out a long time ago that if you shine a certain wavelength of light on particular substances you can cause the electrons to be removed so this is the basis of PES the way it works is we take uh, a substance and we shine a, a certain amount we, so, we shine a certain wavelength of light excuse me a certain wavelength of light onto that substance we know the energy of that light we know that some electrons are going to be released by that substance the instrument the PES instrument is able to determine accurately the kinetic energy of that electron when it is um, removed from the substance because of the light that you're shining on it now we can calculate exactly what the energy of that light is that we're shining on the substance the instrument can calculate directly what the kinetic energy of that electron is and thereby we can calculate the ionization energy of the electron that's being removed from that substance in the PES instrument now I want to point out to you the relationship between ionization energy and potential energy all right the magnitude of, of ionization energy the magnitude of energy required say to remove this electron from the atom is equal to the magnitude of the potential energy of that electron but we change the sign so in other words the ionization energy the energy it takes to remove this electron is equal to negative potential energy now the negative sign there is to indicate direction solely direction so what this so what this means is that if we know the ionization energy how much energy it takes to remove an electron from an atom and we know exactly the energy of that electron then we automatically know the potential energy of that electron and through Coulomb's law all right uh, through Coulomb's law the potential energy is going to equal all right the negative of the product of the charges over the distance that that electron is away from the protons so this quantity up here I, I don't want to lose people in the math all right the bottom line is this quantity right here you can think of it this way represents the magnitude of the the charges all right and when I talk about charges I'm talking about this relationship you've got your proton and it is an oppositely charged particle compared to the electron and it's the force of attraction that holds the electron on the atom so this this quantity right here is the product of the charges it's the magnitude of the charge that's that's causing this force of attraction then divided by the distance so the bottom line is is that with this instrument the instrument will shine uh, a certain wavelength of light onto a substance we know the energy of that wavelength because of this equation the instrument the instrument is able to determine specifically the kinetic energy of the electron 
as it leaves the surface of the atom and we can calculate the ionization energy of that electron simply by taking the difference between the energy of the light source that we're using to um, shine on the substance minus the kinetic energy and once we have the uh, ionization energy then we can know the potential energy of the electron and when we know the potential energy of the electron we can know where it is the distance it is away from the protons so how do we use this all right so if we look at neon for a minute all right it's got 10 electrons and if we write its electron configuration using the quantum mechanical me uh, model it's going to be 1s2 2s2 2p6 so neon's 10 electrons are essentially housed by two energy levels so coming back over here to my diagram that means neon's electrons are encompassed in both of these energy levels all right and energy level two is broken into two subshells so if we take neon and we use PES to analyze it we're gonna get a scan that's gonna look like this all right and on the vertical axis we're gonna have um, numbers of uh, electrons and down here we're gonna have ionization energy and ionization energy is going to be increasing to the left okay and out here we're just going to arbitrarily say it's zero somewhere so in other words as we go left to right ionization energy is increasing now here's here's what we see in the scan there's going to be a total of three peaks and the peaks are going to look like this roughly all right the the area of the peak is proportional to the number of electrons that share the exact energy uh, that share these exact energies okay these two peaks are proportional to peaks that have two electrons in them and this higher peak is proportional to um, the area of a peak that would have six electrons and so you can see that when you use PES you get a num you get a series of peaks that will be consistent and proportional to what the can, uh, mechanical model, the, 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 the quantum mechanical model says that we should have in the electron configuration. So this peak here represents the two electrons that are in the 1s shell. This peak represents the electrons that are in the uh, 2s sub, sub shell of energy level 2 and this is the um, peak that correlates with the 2p and there are um, six electrons in it all right now we're going to take and we'll go ahead and apply this uh, to some other examples in in the next two uh, in the next video